Hey everybody, welcome back to my art channel and to my studio. I'm Anna Blunt and today I'm going to be mixing some mica powders um, with gloss gel. So I've got some chameleon mica powders here which are color shifting. They're from Let's Resin and I've just started working with them and I like them a lot. You can also use it with their regular just single color mica powders from Let's Resin and they've got a whole bunch of colors. But today I'm doing two chameleon powders that I'm going to use in a couple upcoming pours. So um, if you've never worked with mica powders before, I did this other video on how to mix them for a bloom pour. So how to mix them with a typical bloom pouring medium recipe. What I'm going to be doing today is mixing them with gloss gel medium from Liquitex Basics. So this is to make more of an actual paint, a thick, like the consistency of a tube paint, so that then it can be mixed with Floetrol or with water or with glue or with whatever pouring medium you want to add to make it the right consistency that it plays well with your other colors and it behaves like a paint and it's essentially just a homemade metallic paint. So that's what I'm doing today. So I've got my little uh, quarter teaspoon scoop and I've got my gel medium, got my scale, and I have my mask because these mica powders are very fine and you don't want to breathe them in. That would be bad for your lungs. So I'm going to put, put a cup on my scale here and go ahead and turn that on just to zero it out. And then I'll put on my mask and, oh, the two colors that I have here are the Chameleon Powder Grape, which is blue with a purple shine, and Teal, which is blue with a green shine. So both of these are going into some wave pours. So one's going to have a greenish metallic and one is going to have a purple metallic. So let me put on my mask. Okay, so I have my my gloss gel medium, and I'm going to mix up an ounce of this for each color, which may be more than I need, but I want to make sure that I have enough. Okay, there we go. One ounce. So it looks white, but it does dry clear and gloss. Now, when I did my other video on how to mix mica powders, what I said was for about an ounce of pouring medium, I'd use about a quarter teaspoon of mica powder, but that was for a bloom pour where I was mixing it straight into the thing that would go right onto the painting. With this, I'm mixing up a much thicker consistency, which will then be thinned with Floetrol or water or something else. So you need to add more of the powder to it so that it is more pigmented and can be cut without losing its shimmer. So I'm going to start with grape. So because I am planning on cutting this with Floetrol or with water, where, where this mixture is only about one third of the total amount, you know, if you say like one part paint to two parts of Floetrol. So instead of mixing one quarter teaspoon of the mica powder in with this, I'm going to mix three quarters of a teaspoon to make the same amount of just base paint. Does that make sense? So there's one quarter teaspoon. I'm going to start by doing two and mixing that in and then I will add the third. So there's my second. It's especially in like the scooping and the tapping where the powder can become airborne, so that's why you want to wear a mask. Even if you think you're going to be really careful, you don't want this stuff going into your lungs. Well, this is a really pretty color. It's just this nice kind of grayish, purplish blue. And clearly this would be pigmented enough to use as it is, but since I'm planning on, on thinning it down with something else, either Floetrol or water or both, 
I'm going to add, ooh, do you see that shimmering? The purple shine in the light, that's beautiful. All right, I'm gonna add one more scoop. So this is basically all incorporated in here. If you were gonna then add the Floetrol straight to this, you wouldn't have to mix it up all that much more thoroughly. Since I don't know if I'm gonna be cutting, you know, thinning down this entire amount, I'm just gonna stir it a bit more to make sure that it is fully mixed and all of it has the same amount of mica powder in it. So that if I use half, you know, I'm not getting the half that has more in it and leaving a half that has less, or vice versa. But that's super pretty, and it's nice and thick. It definitely feels like a good, uh, high-quality tube paint. Do you see that purple shine in there? Very cool. All right, let me set that aside, and I will do the next color. So you might ask, why go to the trouble of doing this when you can just buy your own metallic paint? And that's a good question, but when you buy mica powders, they usually come in in a pack. Unless you're buying specific ones like this little piggy pigments, where you buy each individual pigment. The nice thing about this is it comes, like this is 10 different color shifting ones, and there's this other pack, which is 36 colors, and it's not huge bottles, but as you can see, like, each of these makes, it makes, uh, I think it would be like, like a two ounce tube of metallic paint. So you're getting a lot of different colors if you want to be able to have a lot of variety in your pores without buying giant tubes of every color, this is a great way of expanding your metallic line because then you just buy like one of, the, one of these and this is eight ounces of the medium that you can use for whatever color you want instead of paying, you know, for like a four ounce tube of every single color that you want. So it's just a different way of doing it and it depends on what your goal is in painting. This just offers more customizability, so it's fun. Okay, the third, third scoop. Pull it back on there. So this is the Chameleon Powder Teal. So you can see it's blue, but it's got a green shimmer which means depending on how the light hits it, it may look blue or it may look green, which is perfect for the painting that I'm prepping it for. All right, this is looking great. This is looking very, very well mixed, nice and shimmery. Wonderful. Hmm, so now I have to decide which one of these these are going to be for um, two wave pours, which is going to be a comparison of a like a blow dryer wave with Floetrol as the medium and a blow dryer wave with just water added to the paint to do kind of a comparison on how the paints react and how they uh, behave differently. So I need to decide <laughs> which one of those is getting the purple and which one of those is getting the green. So let me decide that and then I will come back and show you how I'm going to uh, mix it then with Floetrol or water to make it into a full fluid consistency paint. Okay, so I've picked my colors for the paintings and I've determined that the grape, which is the blue with the purple sheen, that's gonna be mixed with Floetrol. That's gonna be in my craft paint and Floetrol wave. And then the teal is gonna be mixed with water for my paint and water wave. So let's start with this. So I know I have an ounce of this paint, so I'm zeroing out my scale so that then I can see 
how much Floetrol I need to add. So I'm going to add, because I have one ounce of paint, I'm going to add two ounces of Floetrol. And I'm going to start by adding one because it's a relatively thick paint, um, just to get it mixed up a bit before I add the rest. So this is a little bit lumpy. It's looking like I probably should have added less Floetrol. Usually, usually I can add a lot of Floetrol all at once. This gloss gel may be thicker than most of the paints that I'm used to working with. So it's just going to take a little bit more mixing to get all those lumps out. Otherwise, it's mixing up exactly like paint would, and it's this beautiful shimmery blue color. So the lesson here is that if you have a really thick paint, you don't want to add all of your medium all at once. And even me adding just half of it, it was still a little bit too much all at once. And it's just, it, it makes it time consuming and, and difficult to get every single bit of, of the thick paint mixed in with the medium. I've just about got it there. Um, certainly when you're adding water to paint, you just add it a little bit at a time and I will show you that once I'm finished with this one. All right, this I think is mixed enough that I can now add my second ounce of Floetrol. So you can see that second round mixed up much easier because it was already kind of mixed in to the first part of the Floetrol. So this looks like a beautiful color. It looks like it's well enough pigmented. You know, it doesn't look like it's too thin. So I think we've got enough of the mica powder in there. And I will be adding, you can see the texture there. It's still pretty thick. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water I'm not going to thin it all the way down to its final consistency because I'm going to wait until I mix the rest of my colors for this pour first. I just want you to see how, how I take this freshly mixed metallic paint and turn it into a paint that's mixed for, for pouring. And you just add water until you reach the desired consistency. So that is looking great. And that is ready to put a lid on and store until it is ready ready to use in my painting. Okay, time for the next one. This is the teal and I'm just going to mix it with water. So, because it's going to be, you know, like a Dutch pour consistency. So, when you mix with just water, you add a little bit at a time. If you add a ton, you're going to get massive lumps. So, so you just do a little at a time and then you mix it until it gets creamy. Once it's creamy and it's like everything has mixed together, the, uh, you know, all of the paint and all of the water is fully incorporated, then you can add some more water. You don't want to add more water if you can still see lumps because that's just going to make the problem worse. Look how beautiful that paint is. Okay, so that's nice and creamy. Looks fully incorporated. So we'll add in another little squirt of water. And I'm still on, I'm still using the scale here. So I'm kind of checking how much water you would add to this gel medium to make it the right consistency for a Dutch pour. So I will let you know, once I get it to the right consistency, I'll let you know what the proportion of, you know, of this stuff plus water, what, what the proportions of those are. Okay, time for some more. Once you have it starting to mix, 
you can add a little bit more each time. It doesn't have to be a tiny, tiny amount, but you still don't want to add a big amount or your paint might seize up. Okay, so you can see it's definitely not flowing yet. So we'll just keep adding water until it reaches the right consistency. Okay, so that's much more that's much more flowy and watery. When you do tube paint and water, you know, artist quality paint versus craft paint, a Dutch pour does feel watery. When you do it with Floetrol, it doesn't. So I think this is just about the right consistency here. It's possible it's even a little bit thin, but I, th I think that's pretty good. So that is basically one part of this to half of water. So it's definitely not a one-to-one -one paint to water. It's more like one ounce of this and I added about half an ounce of water to get it to a Dutch pour consistency. So that's just a helpful kind of thing to know in your head to figure out how much to make. Okay, so that is how you mix up mica powders with Liquitex gloss gel medium to make your own base paint, base paint meaning thick paint that can then be mixed with anything that you want. So yeah, thanks for watching and come back to my channel and check out my other tip videos. I have different uh, paint mixing videos for how to do mica powders for a bloom and how I mix my regular paints for my regular pours. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.